Um, so yeah, hi everyone. Thank you so much to um, AIMC 2022 for the very kind invitation. Um, my name is Ru Jing, Stacey Huang, I'm zooming in from Hong Kong. Um, um, just a little bit background um, on me. Um, I'm trained as an ethnomusicologist and so I will be speaking from the outside of computer science. Um, since I joined Professor Bob Sturm's Mosaic project in 2019 and then later moved to Hong Kong in 2020, um, my research has been focusing more on um, doing humanistic critique and reflections on AI's applications to music. So thinking about its ethical, cross-cultural, political, and overall philosophical um, implications. I'm also now one of the organizers of, um, one of the co-organizers of the AI Song Contest, which gives me another very interesting um, angle in approaching these issues that I'm trying to work through in my, in my research. So yeah, as introduced my, um, Topic uh, for the short talk today um, is musical labor, talent, and the de-skilled artist in the age of AI. I should start by saying that this is um, a very new project that's still in its early stages, um, but I'm very happy to share with you all here some of the questions and issues that I start to, to think about um, lately um, as part of this upcoming work. So um, specifically, as technology such as AI continue to alter the social divisions and relations of creative production in what scholars have called um, the exceptional economy of art, and as all of us can now easily generate, own, and release new musical compositions by simply pressing um, a few buttons on platforms such as Boomi or Aiva, I'm particularly interested in um, thinking about and examining this much celebrated trope of, of AI's democratizing effect on music and related to it, um, to the changing role of the musician, um, the artist or the artist, the shifting nature of um, musical labor and uh, musical or musical work and in extension, the important notions of artistic skill, um, virtuosity, talent, musicality, and also this, this classical idea of the um, individual solitary artist genius. So these are um, the questions that I'm really thinking about uh, for this uh, new project. So uh, first, um, a very quick re uh, search over the internet these days um, will reveal that democratization is really one of the most um, used buzzwords um, that, that make up a lot of news headlines about AI art and AI music. So the familiar discourse really involves how AI is making possible a new wave of democratization within the creative industries, um, making everyone a musician or an artist, and therefore this is something we should all celebrate and embrace with no reservation. Um, in this current project, um, I'm arguing that the story is a little more complicated than what is often portray portrayed to be, and not to mention that such portrayal is often um, backed by uh, very profit-driven motivations to sell a particular product to everyone it can, it can reach. So, next slide. So today, there has been almost no, or if anything, very few uh, critical examinations on what it really means to democratize music through such advanced technologies and, and what is the ethical significance of this so-called wave of democratization, who does it benefit, who does it harm. Um, one of the few discussions that I found relevant and, and, and writings that I found relevant and in fact quite powerful is featured on this um, Artist Underground platform, which is an online academy co-founded by um, artist and art critique Milena uh, Berziwarda. Since we are uh, pretty short on time today, what I'm going to do is just um, to summarize some of the main points put forth in this article um, titled The Democratization of Art Occurs in Disguise, without going into all the details. So um, starting by historicizing and contextualizing Joseph Boyce's famous statement, everyone is an artist. Uh, which was made in the 1960s. The article here argues that the culture industry today, by promoting what is in fact a pseudo-democratization of music, uh, of art, um, declaring everyone and everything is now automatically artist and art, musician in extension, and um, by removing the concept of, of a boundary of art altogether, um, 
the culture industry by doing so has turned boy's statement into a force that actually act against art against the true autonomy self-determination and freedom of each member of society and thus abusing his original intent into its very antithesis with outright anti-democratic consequences so throughout this article identifies this um, pseudo democratization alongside a widespread um, simultaneous demand for political correctness as the two key forces which um, despite selling well in, in the present um, climate, have made today's standardiza uh, standardization, homogenization, and most importantly, infantilization of artists, art, and the audience, um, not an audience possible. So, a pretty sharp uh, criticism of 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 um, this idea of um, democratization of art. But um, so this is where I start. And with this larger framing in mind, in the remaining uh, few minutes I have today, I want to bring us back to a few historical moments that I think can inspire thinking about the drastic changes, both positive and negative, um, that AI is bringing to the music world. So first, um, the first two moments, I want to start sh by sharing two piano related stories that I think can help us uh, think productively about um, how the descaling of musical labor and consequently the very widespread amateur music making have historically led to new divisions um, and also new kinds of musical labor. So the first here is that of um, um, musical uh, piano tuning, which became a profession in the 19th century. Um, so historically, pian pianists actually had to tune their own p uh, instruments. So it was um, actually in the, uh, the spread of piano ownership and the bulk of amateur uh, keyboard playing um, during the 19th century that created this economic niche for the role of the non-musician piano tuner. As uh, Lozer um, here in 1954 writes, the spread of the instrument among the minimally musical led to the curious consequence that the tuner and the player were more and more rarely um, the same person. Getting my slides. Okay, so very quickly moving on to the second piano um, snapshot. So just um, since we, we really only have a few minutes here, um, the second story here is that of the player piano, which I also think is, is, has a lot of uh, value in terms of uh, helping uh, thinking about all the changes that AI is bringing um, to the music scene. So player piano um, is the piano that, that plays itself, um, the self-playing piano, which peaked in um, the early 20th century. So this is one of the very few uh, scholarly publications about the history of uh, this particular moment in music history and what this history can tell us about the industrialized uh, labor practices related to music and also about the role of the machine in music. So among some of the points made in this work that I think are relevant to, to our discussion about AI in music uh, um, are number one, the player piano, as the, uh, the author argued, did not rob um, concert pianists of their jobs. Number two, the shift of labor types. So in, instead of the mechanical labor traditionally required for piano playing, the player piano required now a managerial labor of a human making sure that the self-playing piano was running smoothly. And number three, while the descaling of musical labor, according to uh, Wente, uh, sounds like a negative side effect of me mechanical instruments, the descaling did actually help bring music to, to more people's homes and, and therefore expanding the possibilities for um, amateurism, amateur music making, which is another discourse that we do um, hear a lot um, in the music AI scene. So next, um, two lessons I think we can learn from the art world. So these are the next uh, and final two snapshots of, of um, the, the art history that I think can, can also really um, inspire thinking about um, the, the the near future of music AI. So the first here, I for the first here, I draw um, mainly from Dave Beach, um, his 2019 article titled "Art and the Politics of Eliminating Hand um, Handicraft." So this article outlines the historical transition from the artisanal workshop to the artist studio, and then um, so also the transition from the artisan to the artist by analyzing the transformation of the social division of labor in art. 
So I think this material is helpful for those of us thinking about AI's impact on the musical world and the changing role of the musician because the art world has actually already undergone a lot of multiple discourses and debates about the artist as a genius versus the artist as a worker and also about the de-skilling in art as a result of advanced technologies. So a few main arguments. So one main argument made in this article is um, the transition from the artisan to the artist um, I write here, um, is a result of changing social division of labor in which, quote, the knowledge, skills, and privileges of the master artisan are distributed now among a set of specialists, both within and outside the artist studio. So in this process, speech went through uh, three waves of de-skilling in art. Um, from 17th century to the 20th century, um, when elements of handicraft were, uh, were gradually shed by the artists, especially in the avant-garde uh, practices. So what the author tries to highlight here is really what he calls a dispersed agency of artistic production, which I also think is a productive way of thinking about multi-authorship, human and machine um, agency, and also musical skill, musicality, in this unavoidable future of AI-assisted music making. And finally, besides speech, there's um, writing about uh, from John Roberts, um, which I think also provides very helpful insights um, um, for the similar issues. So here, many look at two of his writings, one from 2007, one from 2010, um, the book called Skill and De-Skilling um, in Art After the Re uh, Ready Made, and then an article called Art After De-Skilling, which is about the next immediate phase. So um, here, he really starts with reflections on Duchamp's uh, Ready Made in the uh, the early 20th century that is um well to simplify i think most of us have uh, basic understandings of that about that um it refers to art making involving existing extant objects and materials so a few points made here that i think can can inspire um can be inspiring for the context of, of um, human machine co-creativity in the musical context and um where what we have to do um before I mean, the few buttons we may have to press before we can start calling ourselves um, a composer or a songwriter before we can start release all, all those um, songs um, from Boomi or Iva on, on um, Apple Music is, is now very, very different. So the few messages from Roberts here um, that I think are helpful um, can, um, so I summarize, I list three of them here. Um, the first one is um, artistic meaning can be realized not only via the act of art making, but in the act of um, deliberation. And the second is the artist artistic act um, functions as a form of surrogacy. So the artist adopts a conceptualizing role, directing the labor and technical accomplishments of others without actually directing uh, directly manipulating any materials himself. And finally, and this is my last uh, message, um, with, with the massive disinvestment of art from the confines of singular authorship and from erratic forms, from the erratic forms of production and spectatorship associated with painting, mechanical production and interdisciplinar uh, interdisciplinarity become the motor of art's passage into the everyday and collective experience. And this is uh, the end of my short presentation. Thank you so much.